Welcome back to a view to a grill. I'm Johnny and today we're going to do a maple and holiday spiced glazed ham on the Weber kettle. First thing we're going to talk about is the setup on the Weber kettle. Normally I would use my slow and sear but I understand that not everyone has the slow and sear. If you don't have a slow and sear here is the setup that I like to use. I'll just mark off about one third of the bottom grill grate with a row of charcoal and then fill it in. I'll leave a space at the top for my lit charcoal. The rest of the charcoal is just going to be my reserve fuel for the rest of the cook. I'll also use a few chunks of oak that I harvested right off of my oak trees in my backyard. I'll just get the oak in and bury it in some charcoal. Now I like to bury my oak, but if you don't, if you want to throw them right on top, you can do that as well. Now I have that all covered up, but notice I still left some space for my lit charcoal. And while the charcoal chimney is getting started, this is a good time to get your ham ready for the grill. I have a Smithfield ham. This one comes in at almost eight pounds. I'll just go ahead and get the ham out of the package. I'll place it on a sheet pan and rack. I'm using a little less than half a chimney starter of lit charcoal for this cook. And I'll just get that into that empty space that I reserved earlier. After that, I'll go ahead and get the ham on the indirect side of the grill. For this cook, I'm also going to fill in the sheet pan with some hot water. This water is going to help us create some moisture inside of the Weber kettle throughout the cook. Today I'm using the Thermalworks signals to help me monitor the ambient temperature of the Weber kettle. And now I'll just get the lid closed. Now remember the ham is already cooked so we're not cooking the ham we're just warming it up. For this first part of the cook I want to try to keep it between 275 and 300 degrees. Now since I started off with so much lit charcoal I know that I'm already going to have to regulate the amount of oxygen being drawn into the Weber kettle. So I'll set my top vent to about halfway and then the bottom vent all the way over to the smoke position of the Weber kettle. I let that go for a little while and it was having a little issue getting over 250. So I decided to make another adjustment. I just barely tap the top vent open and then I slid the uh, bottom vent over to the right just a little bit to allow more oxygen which should bring our heat up. And then finally we got in our target range 280 degrees. Now that's on the low end but we're going to go with it. While the ham is getting warm in the Weber kettle let's talk about the ingredients to our glaze. For our ingredients we're going to need some ground nutmeg, ground cinnamon, ground cloves, a cup of brown sugar, a half a stick of butter, some maple syrup, a pinch of salt. Now about 30 minutes after we reached our target range, we're gonna give the ham our first look. As you can see here, we have a darker color on the side facing the heat than we do on the side away from the heat. To keep the color even, I'll just rotate the ham. I'll go ahead and get the ambient probe out of the way and just turn it 180 degrees. I'll also go ahead and insert the uh, probe thermometer that we're going to use to monitor the internal temperature of the ham. Now don't forget to reinstall your ambient temperature probe. Everything looks good so we'll just get the lid closed and let it ride. So at this point I'm feeling pretty confident. I have my Thermalworks app monitoring the internal temperature of the uh, ham and the ambient temperature of the Weber kettle. So I decided to take my dog for a walk. Now when I got back home about 20 minutes later this was uh, the situation. The temperature shot up all the way to 363 degrees which is way too hot. Let's talk about what I did to correct the temperature. The first thing I did was shut down the uh, bottom vent. Now the bottom vent is what draws oxygen air into the Weber kettle. So I wanted to cut off the oxygen at its source. The next thing I did was I closed down the top vent to keep used oxygen 
from leaving the Weber kettle. So basically what I'm doing is cutting off the oxygen supply and making it harder for used oxygen to escape, which will effectively bring down the temperature of my Weber kettle. The issue was, was that my app was not refreshing. While I was away walking the dog, the app said 295 degrees while the main unit was at 366 degrees. I thought I was good while I was gone, but I wasn't. And this was just a case of technology giving me a false sense of security. 30 minutes later, we'll take a look at the ham and see what we got. Now, I think this ham is looking really good. This is the final color that I wanted the ham to be. So we basically just did that in the middle of the cook instead of at the end of the cook. While I have the lid open, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the glaze. Now let's go ahead and throw in the butter, a cup of brown sugar, and just kind of melt that down a little bit. After that is melted down a little, I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of maple syrup. We're gonna use about a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a little bit more cinnamon than nutmeg. Clove is a really powerful um, spice. If you don't like clove, leave the clove out. I happen to like it, but I don't like it when it's strong. I just use a few shakes of clove. Now also while I have this open, I'm gonna check and see how much charcoal I have left because I need enough charcoal to go the duration of the cook. So I'm gonna get all the charcoal pushed over to one side and then kind of fill it in a little bit with some uh, unlit charcoal. Now earlier when I was putting the glaze together, I forgot to put the salt in. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a pinch of salt now. I like the color of the ham where we are. So to keep the ham from getting any darker, I'm going to tint it with aluminum foil. Now I just get the lid closed and wait until the internal temperature of the ham gets to about 130 degrees. So now we've reached 130 degrees. My final internal temperature needs to be about 145 degrees. So knowing that, it's a good time to start glazing the ham. I'll get the foil off and literally just start pouring the glaze over the top. Kind of lean the ham over a little bit and try to get inside of all of those spiral cuts of the ham. And you're gonna to wanna to do this throughout the ham. We'll close the lid and all we're doing is letting the uh, glaze just get nice and tacky. This is only gonna take about five minutes. So five minutes later, we'll get the lid open and we'll do that exact same thing. And I did this a total of three times. Now we've reached our internal temperature of about 145 degrees. It's time to get the ham off and let it rest for a few minutes. Now I think having a little bit of color on the ham just makes the ham taste better. You do run the risk of drying out your ham if you let the internal temperature get too hot. As long as you keep it about 145 degrees and don't go too much higher than that, your ham will not dry out. It's going to be colorful, tacky, delicious goodness. And yeah, that's a good ham. Now don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching If You Two Grill. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, y'all.